So hello and welcome back to the Gorilla Biker and today what we are on is this absolutely beautiful 2017 Ducati Multistrada 950. Um, this bike is available to buy from Freeman Motorcycle so thank you very much to them for letting me take it out. And what we're going to be going through today is the comfort, power and torque, handling and suspension, brakes, um, the cost, extras, pretty much everything you want to know um, about this bike. Well, <laughs> I hope everything you want to know about this bike. Um, but yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. Once we cover what tires are on this bike. So there are Midas TerraForce Ours, I believe. Yes, TerraForce Ours front and back. They're brand new from Freeman. So I will have to take it a little bit handy today because um, these are brand new. So I, I'm, I'm literally breaking them in uh, forever. Whoever is lucky enough to be able to buy this thing because um, I've only ridden it for about 30, 40 minutes so far and I have to say I'm taken with it. So anyway, uh, let's go through my first ride impressions for this bike. So first and foremost, I think this is kind of referred to as a middleweight adventure bike. Um, and I have to say it is, it is very, very comfortable. A middleweight sort of sport adventure in my opinion, it is quite sporty. But from a comfort perspective, you know, how does it compare to some of the other bikes I've ridden? In this price range and class, you know, I think the BMW F850 GS um, would kind of fall into the same kind of category. You know, this obviously being a, a 950 L twin from Ducati versus the parallel 850 twin from BMW. And I have to say, you know, from a comfort perspective, I think they're equal but different. Um, so this Ducati is, you're very much sat more in the bike, whereas the BMW you're sat up and on it. And the BMW has nice wide tapered bars, the same as this does. Um, I do think the controls on this are a little bit easier to use. Uh, the screen is nice and clear, but definitely a little bit more aged than the BMW. There is um, you know, a digital display on this, whereas the BMW has that nice fancy TFT one. The one I have ridden did, obviously that is a, an optional extra, I do believe on those. Um, but from a comfort perspective, the screen is fine. You know, it, it, it works very, very well. Um, it's quite clear and it has a lot of information on it. Um, the seat's very comfortable. You can also get a low and a high seat on these if you do buy this one and don't like what I assume to be um, the standard seat, you can get a lower and a higher seat. Personally, I think it's very comfortable. Uh, you can also get rubber kind of inserts for the pegs. Uh, these ones are just ball metal at the moment, so whoever had it before obviously removed uh, the rubber. It's not very vibey, to be honest. For a twin, it, it's actually quite smooth. It feels quite smooth. You have this adjustable screen uh, up and down. You just pinch, pinch and pull. Uh, it's actually quite good. It has and four, so four levels of adjustment. Um, and we will talk about that screen out on the road a bit more. It's not perfect. The wing mirrors are really nice. Uh, very usable, very visible. You also have these hand guards, which I am a fan of hand guards since I started, use, started using bikes with them. They, they do protect your hands very well. And the suspension and ride in general is quite plush. It's um, it's very, very comfy. Uh, and I know the rear shock is fully adjustable, so you can dial that up. But from a pure comfort perspective, I mean, if you're gonna buy this bike, it's probably gonna be for touring and, you know, general trip stuff like that, or even like shorter day trips or whatever else. And for that, it's, it's very, very capable. And also, you know, the seat is quite, you know, like I said, you're sitting in it. And then if you do decide to bring a passenger, there is quite a bit of acreage back there for um, however large their bum is. And speaking of a passenger, you know, if you do decide to bring them, um, the preload adjuster is really easily accessible right here um, on the, the shock. So I, I think that's a really nice touch because a lot of shocks obviously on bikes that I have ridden don't come with that easy uh, adjustment. So I have to say I'm a big fan of that. One thing I do feel I have to mention, so when I'm sat on the bike, and I have my foot on this here, when I'm you trying to use it, I, my ankle is rubbing that engine case there, uh, the clutch case cover. And I have to say, it's the only kind of downside I have noticed so far um, on this bike is, is that my foot kind of rubs off that casing, which not only is annoying, but it's gonna cause wear uh, on that case, of course. So anyway, now I will show you me on the bike. I know that's something that people like to see. So to throw it out there, I am six foot seven, weigh around about 20, 20 odd stone, which is 200 centimeters. Um, and around about, I'm not, the camera's not far enough back. <laughs> 200 centimeter, 280, 290 pounds, roughly. And here is my large self on the bike. Um, I think I fit it quite well, you know. As you can see, there's a lot of room here for my leg. I'm not getting caught by any, um, 
fairings or anything like that. It's just a nice neutral seating position, I have to say. Really, really neutral, really, really comfortable. All the levers and everything else are easily accessible. All your option buttons and anything else you might need are right there be, be, you know, beside you. And the mirrors are quite easy to adjust too. And like I said, you can see out of them, which is a huge bonus. But anyway, that's all we're going to talk about comfort-wise here on the ground. And um, we'll talk about the rest out in the road. As is so often the case, that screen, while I'm sure it'll be fine for a slightly shorter rider, even then I don't know. It, what it needs is a little lip up here, just a, just a little turnout lip. And it'll work fine for taller riders like myself as well. The problem being, uh, I'm not getting any buffeting from it or anything like that, but it's quite loud. And I will say that um, first gear seems quite long, so it's not it's not grabby or anything like that which can can be unpleasant in a twin if you've ever had that you know a, a very grabby first gear that kind of wants to just throw you back in the seat can can be a little bit less um than pleasant so i have to say that's definitely a nice a nice thing and you know a lot of a lot of comfort things kind of obviously fill in with everything i will say look i can feel it again that clutch case that's just in the way of my foot <laughs> it's really quite it's quite annoying. But I mean, comfort-wise, at any speed, this thing just pulls, and you know you have all the way up into your six gears, and it just it just tips along. You know, overall, I have to say it is a very comfortable bike. Like, I think the biggest thing for me is on the road, how neutral I am in my seating position is genuinely kind of um, incredible like if I if I was to be able to rectify oh that slipper clutch is lovely if I was to be able to rectify oh yeah that um, that screen I honestly think this would be one of the most comfortable bikes I'd ever ridden from my height I just fit on it so well you know uh, like all this really needs for someone like me is a bit of work on the suspension and it'd be pretty much perfect but uh it's just so smooth, you know, for an L twin. It does it actually doesn't really feel like a twin. It's so well balanced. And you know, like I said earlier, or well earlier for me, later for you guys, but the suspension and handling and stuff on this, it's so direct, it's so controlled into corners and stuff, it actually adds to the comfort because you can be so confident riding it. Let's just dip it into this corner here. Second gear, really low revs. It's off camber, it's awkward. Out we go, and away. Such a such a comfortable bike to ride. The only, like I said, the only two things I would say detract from it is definitely that clutch cover. Um, when I go for the rear brake, my ankle is it's pushing out my ankle all the time. Not great. Um, but that's that and the screen are the only. And I'll just move down the screen. Oh yeah, that's way worse. So yeah, the screen is doing a job, but it, um, it's just not enough. A little lip on the top, or maybe one of those little spoilers and it'll be absolutely perfect, or take it off altogether, one or the other, one or the other. And that's kind of all I have for comfort on the road, in that it's um, it's a bike that's impressed me, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's nice to ride at pretty much any speed. It's a bike I would like to try going properly fast on a track as well. It's a bike that kind of tells you I would be good at that then you know just when you want to slow right back down and potter through corners like we're going to do here now just potter through this corner do 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 it's just lovely the seat is just uh, it's just it's just lovely that's honestly all i have to say everything is nice the riding position is nice the bars are lovely the seat's lovely the suspension is plush and comfortable it's just a nice place to be a very nice place to be i'm actually kind of surprised to be honest i didn't think ducati uh, knew how to do comfort as well as they do except obviously on the bigger multi-strata so it's good to see that they've taken a lot of those learnings and put them into this. So now let's talk a little bit about the power and torque of this bike. Um, it is called the 950, but it's actually 937 cc's of displacement. It is a Ducati L-Twin. I think it's 11 degrees over 90, um, as far as I remember. And it has about 113 brake horsepower and around about 96 newton meters of torque. I'll put all the actual facts and figures on the screen in all of the different formats so people understand what we're talking about here. Um, it is a cable operated clutch. Um, it does have a slipper clutch, which 
to my mind is um, since I've started trying them, I think they're absolutely magnificent to be honest. And it delivers the power very smoothly as you'll see on the road in a minute. Um, you know, for a twin, and I obviously have taken to trying to ride twins recently because I, I actually am really enjoying them. Um, it does the job very, very well. Um, the, the engine's a peach to be honest. Look, the Caddy know what they're doing and it is a six speed chain final drive as well. So, you know, if you're trying to get away from chain maintenance, this is not the bike for you. Um, but yeah, that L-Twin, it's, it's a peach. That's all I can say really. You know, it, it delivers the power fairly consistently um, and it does have four different rider modes so there's like uh, sport I'll check sport and urban anyway um, there's also enduro so there's sport touring urban and enduro um, I have to say I, I have left it in sport and um, this is ride by wire obviously which gives you the ability to have your um, rider modes <laughs> and adjust the clutch. I was started off in urban um, just to get used to the bike and I found urban a little bit anemic on the throttle. Uh, so much so that I really was expecting the throttle to come on a lot sooner. Now that's something I have noticed about these bikes um, with ride by wire anyway is some of them just they're just not as engaging as you know an old cable operated throttle um, or you know an actual metal cable operated throttle. But um, once I put it into sport mode, it's very, very nice. Um, I didn't really try touring mode properly yet, so we will give that a go out on the road. But I have to say, sport is lovely. Lovely and punchy, really gives you all of that power, but still has traction control, um, a good level of traction control turned on, which, look, it's not a bad thing. You know what I mean? Traction control is uh, it's a nice safety net uh, if you want it. But of course, you can also do a custom rider mode and change to have no traction control if that's what you want. Um, you can also turn down ABS quite a lot, and uh, yeah, I mean, look, I, I haven't fully test, tried to test the ABS yet, um, but I have to say the brakes are really good on this, but we'll talk about that later as well. I suppose the big things for this are, you know, you got a, a nice amount of power out of a twin, particularly a 937cc twin, 113 brake horsepower. There's acres of torque in this thing, and because of the setup of the bike, the torque never feels like it's punching you, but you just know that you have a lot of it. Um, it's really, really nicely on tap uh, throughout the rev range uh, to, to seat of my pants feel, say. I actually haven't looked at the power curve for this bike. And how does it sound? So this does have the stock exhaust on there. The 950S, uh, you can get like a Termignoni exhaust for these, um, you know, that fits straight on there and is, you know, Ducati warranted, I suppose that they, they support Termignoni <laughs> in that development of that, or did support them in the development of that. And I personally think that would wake it up quite a lot because it is a pretty quiet bike. You know, you do have that big old bread box in under there. And I do think it's one thing that I personally would change if I owned this bike, because it does strangle that engine just a little bit sound wise. It performs fine, obviously it's mapped for it, etc. cetera. Um, but I do think I would like to hear it a little bit more because I'm sure it is a, chorus of beauty and song um, when it's out on the road with the Termignoni on there or uh, to be honest look any exhaust you don't have to go with Termignoni just because the caddy supported it but yeah I have to say that's the one thing I will say about the power and torque is it just it just sounds a little bit a little bit dead and some of the power modes feel a little bit anemic you don't really need to use anything that's not sport on the road unless you're really trying to keep your fuel economy um, you know improved a little bit or something per personally I honestly I don't know why I would ever use anything that wasn't um, sport. That's just my observation. So now power and torque, we're in second gear, 5,000 RPM. Uh, All the way to the top of fourth, and I mean this thing holds. But the thing is, it's a really smooth power delivery, like fourth gear low, just pulls on again. It, it, like I said, it doesn't really feel like a twin. There's no vibrations, there's no roughness. It pulls the whole way through the rev range. It's just so composed. And then the slipper clutch when you're coming into corners, just you just bang down through the gears, tuck it in, out, on into this right-hander. Yeah, push it on, and out. And it just straightens itself up. It is honestly such a nice bike to ride over this little hump. But you know, it, it kind of belies its power figures, that 113 brake horsepower. Uh, it doesn't really matter on roads like these, you know, it's all about that torque and it has torque in 
speeds like in into this corner in second and out front end gets light absolute pleasure it's an absolute pleasure to ride and you know i have to say i've, I've often been a proponent of you know bikes that aren't super powerful on the road and this kind of fits that bill it's just enough power again here we go over the hump it's just enough power that you could definitely still get yourself into trouble and you can definitely definitely still have fun but at no point do you feel like you're on the edges of what you should be doing you know what i mean if you're just an average rider like myself oh no my 360 camera's coming loose we'll have to we'll have to fix that if you're an average rider like myself um this bike more than caters to pretty much i would say all abilities i'd say this thing is well capable of um you know really hustling someone uh, of, a, of a greater riding ability than myself but we're, we're finished power and torque we'll move on from that just to say that it is a really nicely balanced bike um for the road like i i know some people like to have you know a lot of power and a lot a lot of torque but for your average rider for your daily rider for your person that just wants to be able to jump onto a bike and go and enjoy it and have enough power to do everything this is perfect you know into corners lovely and controlled on the throttle once you're in sport mode uh, i have to say that the throttle in sport mode is a lot better into this corner nice and through there 30 miles an hour or so power out up into third and, and you're away it's just lovely but anyway back to you know handling brakes suspension so now let's talk a little bit about um the suspension and handling on this bike so like i said um uh, it does have the fully adjustable rear shock with um that nice preload adjuster straight out the side so that you can access it really really easily um you do have i'm not sure the fully i can't find the compression clicker so i'm not sure is the are the front forks fully adjustable um, but I know I can see preload and rebound up there, so you do have a level of adjustment there anyway. Um, you may only have preload and rebound, in which case it's a pity they didn't put in the compression. Um, I actually see a blanked off piece there that usually is where I would imagine compression would be, so maybe we are missing that. Um, but from factory, I mean, I'm a big guy, I'm a heavy guy, and it feels quite capable, even with me on top of it. A little bit softer, a little bit more plush for sure, um, but on the road, it's feeling absolutely fine <laughs> to be honest um, you know we have this classic ducati trellis frame um, and ducati know how to build bikes you know what i mean this thing handles so sharp out in the road we'll see that out in the road in a second um, it handles just just fantastically this is a two-sided swing arm as well um, i know some people are nervous about single-sided swing arms i think they look cool um, but if that's something that does bother you then obviously you do have that up the front, we do have dual uh, Brembo monoblock calipers, uh, four pistons each, and they work really, really well. And the rear, obviously, we have a small two piston caliper on the back. Um, but these brakes are excellent and they do come with factory braided lines, so that's something you don't need to look at changing um, if you do buy one of these. But I do think the front end might be a little bit soft if you want to just jump onto the track um, from factory without changing your springs or whatever else. And I do think I'm probably at the upper end of weight of most people who uh, are going to buy or ride this bike. There's not a whole pile else to say about it really, you know, suspension handling, um, it's, it's, it's sharp as a tack, it really is. Um, the brakes are very, very good. I did think they were a little bit squishy when I first started riding the bike. They might need a little bleed on this one. Um, but to be honest, as soon as out in the road, I kind of forgot about it and they feel great under the, under the hand then. So it's possible that it's just the master cylinder behaves like that. The rear shock, I think, is very, very nice. Um, really nice for a factory unit to come with everything that's on it. Uh, especially considering these bikes aren't crazy money, even brand new. Um, or weren't crazy money, brand new. And then the rear, the rear is a rear brake. It works, it functions fine. Um, but I think we all know the rear brakes aren't really made to do much on most bikes. And actually I will say as well that because you have those kind of wide, wide tapered bars, the big, big bars, um, they actually just let you throw that bike around quite, quite well as well. You have a lot of leverage on them, um, which is, which is a huge plus on this bike, especially because you are kind of up taller and to get it leaning and stuff is just, you want that little bit of fine control on the bars and you do have that. I actually, I'm, I'm really taken with how this bike handles. It is really, really, um, really glued to the road and just feels fantastic on the road. So yeah, I do like that. So now we're going to just do a quick pull here um, for braking. 
this is my braking spot. So we'll get up to about 100 kilometers an hour. Okay, we're in excess of that. And brake. Look at that. Like, fast to not very fast. I was full on the brakes there. And it was just composed, you know? It was just so, so composed. I, I, like, I really like how this bike handles. This thing is one of the nicest bikes on this road. And this is a road I ride a lot for all of the tests. But this bike is one that I think is one of the best I've ridden, uh, to be honest. It's sharp as a tack, like I said earlier. It really, really is. It just flows through the corners. It gives you confidence. Now, like I said, there is a brand new set of good tires on this. I am a big fan of Midas myself. I've had five sets of them now on my CBF um, of the Touring Force and Sport Force. So I'm sure the tires do make a difference, but the actual geometry, where you're sat, how easy it is to turn the bike in and, you know, like just into this corner. Look how it's just over and back, power on. It's actually such an easy bike to ride just because of how controlled it is and how balanced it is and I am well impressed so again into this corner and now we'll go hard on the brakes here again so 60 miles an hour hard on the brakes all of them no engine braking at all down to 20 nice and reserved up to the junction I have to say the only thing like I said is I do feel when you're braking hard that front dives away from you a bit um, so that's something that definitely it, the preload doesn't seem to have much in it on this uh, this bike so I do think those springs are probably a little bit soft for someone of my size which would suggest to me that if you want to do any two up or anything on this you probably also need stiffer springs um, so certainly that is something I would I would recommend looking at if you're someone who buys this and are a larger person uh, I think look at that view <laughs> I can't I can't not mention that Ireland is really this beautiful in sunshine and just look at that view all the trees and they're absolutely beautiful um, but it's something else I really like about this bike is that it handles really well at speed the front can get a little bit light uh, I have noticed that through some corners the front kind of gets a little bit light a little bit wavy and um, at no point does it feel out of balance or out of control but it does it does definitely let you know that you know you're riding the thing and um, you know which again like isn't something I'm gonna complain about I enjoy knowing I'm riding the bike um, but definitely it's uh it's it's comfortable at speed very capable at speed uh, but also just pottering around like this you know over bumps and through towns like i'm in first gear here just tipping away along and on these on these town roads it's so comfortable so easy to handle and i do think a lot of it is to do with the fact that we have these big wide bars that i see on the likes of the s1000 xr which i've ridden on the likes of the f850 gs which i've ridden the africa twin all of these bikes have these big wide bars now and they really do a lot for the bikes in my opinion you know they really really show a lot for how what these bikes are actually capable of and what these bikes are actually capable of out on the street and stuff it is this is a really good road bike you know what it's designed for it's doing really 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 well i mean if i was to go look at multistratas i'm not going to lie to you and say look at that view today it's just beautiful i'm not going to lie to you and say i'm someone who's going to afford one of the bigger fancier more expensive adventure bikes anytime soon i'm not uh, but this is a bike i could possibly afford used in the future um so it's definitely good that companies are still making something like this that they haven't just ignored completely the suspension i mean they've they've cut cost where it was important for them to cut cost on the likes of the screen you know on the likes of the technology i have no cruise control i have no quick shifter i have no auto blipper you know my forks are probably a bit cheap to be honest i think i think they could have done more there but really and truly the bike is still brilliant you know it is what i would expect from a ducati it is if i bought this and this is what a ducati was i wouldn't be upset you know we're stuck really stuck behind this tractor now hopefully we can get away from it soon but even like i actually like this as a test to be honest because i'm stuck in super slow moving traffic first gear no problem i, I, I am new to this bike and i don't even have to think about it it just rides lovely so now let's talk about aesthetics and you're going to notice i've brought us to the front of the bike to start this conversation and there's a reason for that i am not a fan of the beak um, i do think overall this is an absolutely beautiful bike and we'll get to that in a second but the beak 
I just needed to talk about it on the off. I've never, I've never really understood the need to double chin the front of a bike and put a beak on it. It works. I mean, it does work. It's still, like I said, it's still overall, it's a beautiful bike and the beak does kind of flow into the upper fairings and stuff. It works. I just wonder, is there better thing than a beak? You know what I mean? I don't know. You let me know in the comments what you think of the beak. It's, yeah. yeah. The one thing, one thing I will say is these lights are really, really pretty. The rear tail section is very pretty. Um, I do think the handguards, the integrated indicators are very pretty. The front end overall is quite a good looking bike. Like I said earlier, it's just a pity um, these forks aren't kind of colored the same as the frame. They do kind of match in at the rear set, so they save themselves there a little bit. But like this bike is just full of absolutely beautiful colors, you know, from the wheels, the powder coat on, on the wheels kind of matches into the brakes. Uh, the powder coating on the trellis frame is a beautiful color, really blends in with the well, with the red really nice. And then obviously we have black throughout with red stitching on the seats. It's, it's just a really nice bike. It's really well designed. The Italians know how to make things beautiful. The engine itself is a piece of art. You know what I mean? It's, it's a tough one to kind of put together because I do think it's a really good looking bike. I'm just, I always get hung up on those beaks. I do always get hung up on those beaks. It wouldn't stop me buying it. Um, I do think, like I said, overall, it's a beautiful bike, but it would give me pause. And I do think that the stock exhaust, uh, it's a strange one because obviously everything about this bike is kind of loud and imposing from the, from you start from the red color. It's, it's an imposing, shouty, look at me, I'm a Ducati color. And we have this little, little exhaust. It's just a little, it's just, it's just little, I don't, I don't like it. And it's one of the, probably the first thing I would change from a looks perspective, because I mean, if you buy an Italian bike, you buy it because it's Italian and it's supposed to be pretty. You don't buy it because it's safe. You know what I mean? It's, and that exhaust looks like it was a safe decision. I mean, look, they probably know it's going to be taken off. Most people are going to take them off. Um, but for people who don't want to take them off, and there's plenty of people out there who don't want to swap their stock exhausts, why are they stuck with that? I actually like where the uh, number plate is held, because not only is the number plate held in a sensible location, it's actually going to block you throwing crap from the road up all over your back, so that's nice. Um, there's obviously that little blemish on the frame where someone was obviously scuffing with their pants um, when they were riding this bike, so that's something you might want to fix, or just put a sticker over it. I'd probably just get a frame protector sticker and put it over that. Um, but other than that, this bike is mint. The wheels are in really good condition. The chain is very clean. I would imagine it's fairly new. Um, the engine is perfect. I don't see any paint chips or anything like that. Um, the headers are showing a little bit of age and wear, but that's okay. Nothing major there. You could clean it if you wanted to. Personally, I never clean headers because I'm lazy. I just don't want to. Um, the forks show no pitting whatsoever on them. I mean, it's a new bike. 2017 is a new bike. And then on the left side, it's much of the same. It's in really, really good condition. And we don't really have any frame scuffing over here from whatever pants the person was wearing. So. It's just a pretty bike. And, and to be honest, the cockpit area, you know, you'll be seeing it on screen now. That digital display, while it, I don't think it's going to blow anyone away, it's not the most beautiful thing in the world. Um, it is definitely very effective at what it does. And I think it's, it doesn't take away from the looks of the bike. It fits well. It's just a little bit plasticky, a little bit dated, I think, for 2017. Um, definitely one of the prettiest things on this bike is the seat. You know, the, the stitching, the red stitching and the different um, texture on the seat. You, you know, you have the grip on the side for the legs uh, and then the softer bit in the middle, which is really nice. The fuel cap is a bit bland, um, but you know, we'll forgive that. You can always change it if you really want to. Uh, it does have the nice little Ducati inlay on it. And the handlebar clamps, I think, are actually quite pretty and blend in well. I like the color of the handlebars and you have that nice Ducati uh, embossed on it as well, or raised. It's embossed. I think embossed means raised. No, I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's all there is to it. I think it's a very, very pretty bike. I would go so far as to say beautiful. And I think if you were to buy this, uh, you would like it a lot. So now let's talk about the extras. So on this bike, you do have heated grips over here. I'm not sure, can you actually see that? It's just, they're right there. Oxford heated grips, you do have that. Um, but to be honest, the most of the extras on this are definitely hidden on this screen here. So we do have a slipper clutch, which is a nice little extra bonus to have. But you do have the selectable riding modes, sport, touring, urban and enduro. Um, you do have a lot of other stuff on there as well, like a gear indicator. You have your temperature, you have your speed, you have your average 
MPG UK. You have your total mileage. Uh, you have your traction control and your ABS level. It's and, and you also have a fuel gauge. It's it's a really nice dash area with a lot of different options. Like a gear indicator is a nice to have. A fuel gauge is a very nice to have. Traction control and switchable ABS is a very nice to have. I don't know can you turn the ABS off fully, um, but certainly the, the levels to it is quite nice. One thing this is missing, cruise control. Why if you have ride by wire, would you not put cruise control? That surprised me a little bit. I, I, I would have expected anything with ride by wire from 2017 would have cruise control. So that's definitely a small uh, takeaway from it. And you also do have a little auxiliary plug here um, that you can plug in a GPS or whatever else to that you, you might want to do. There's not a huge amount of extras to this. Like it is 2017, it is the Caddy, but there's no quick shifter. There's no auto blipper. Uh, there's no cruise control. The screen is a manual adjust. It's not electric. Not that I'd want one personally myself anyway. Um, you do, like I said, get the preload adjustment with the rear. Um, but that's kind of it. It is generally a fairly simple, straightforward bike, uh, which I actually like. You know, Ducati obviously made this um, to be a cheaper entry model over their 1200 uh, Multistrad or whatever else, or the 1250, whatever it is these days. Um, and I think they did it really well. They left you with what you really want. Um, I would have liked to see cruise control on there at minimum. That can't cost that much to throw on there. And I would have liked to see maybe a quick shift for auto blip, but again, can't cost that much. But even with those two together, if, if it raised the purchase price of the bike by a thousand, would you really want it? Like I went through earlier, you know, we have, we have our um, a mode. So we're gonna swap into touring here right now, which is just press your enter button anywhere you want, um, change it and it'll just automatically go into touring if you hit enter again, which I didn't because I'm an idiot. There we go. And now we're in touring. So it's hit enter, select it, hit enter, close, close your throttle, and it changes. And the only thing I don't, like that's already definitely, I can feel a difference in the throttle and stuff. But that's kind of all the extras are really worth mentioning on this bike from factory. That's kind of it, and the slipper clutch. You know, the slipper clutch is a huge one for me now that I've used them. Um, I love them, they're brilliant. And it is an overrun slipper clutch, so when you're banging down through gears at high revs, uh, it just makes it all nice and smooth. But definitely the modes are nice to have, you know. You have that Ducati safety pack, which is the traction control and ABS. That's a nice to have. And you know, the hand guards and all that are nice to have, but they're not really extras. They all come kind of as standard. So it's, you know, it is what it is. The other extra that this does have is obviously an aftermarket uh, set of heated grips from Oxford. And if you live in Ireland and want to ride your bike in the winter, uh, heated grips are kind of a must to me in my head. I would not be without them ever again. Uh, they're just too nice, too wonderful. They do their job too well. Hi, Mike. How are you? <laughs> Good. How much, how much does the bike cost? The bike is 10750. And how, what's the best way to get in contact with you to buy you can said bike? Contact me by phone or by email. Sales at freemanmotorcycles.ie or 087-677-7738 You're looking lovely today, day. Toddy, by the way. Thanks very much, man. Like my new hat. <laughs> it's, it's lovely. Yeah, Heidi yeah. man, check him out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Thanks, Toddy. Thanks, man. The last thing I want to talk about, uh, after you just heard from Toddy on cost, is the kind of the practicality of this. How would I, what would I see this used for? And to be honest, I think this would be used for everything. Uh, if I was to buy this, this would replace my CBF. You know, this would be my up and down to work everyday bike. This would be my go on tours bike. This would be my bring toaster away for the day bike. Um, I think it's definitely a bike that is fully capable of doing all of those things. You know, slap a couple of panniers on it, slap a bag on the back, a tail pack, a bit of a tank bag there. There's loads of room for one. Um, and you'd be away on a tour, no problem. You know, uh, the, the fact that you have that quick adjust preload on the rear shock, um, would let you carry a passenger very very quickly and easily so you know definitely no problems there uh, you could enjoy it you could really you could really uh, have a bit of fun with your passenger as well the only thing again is you would have to change those front springs they're definitely uh, I think probably the one of the major weaknesses um, on the on the bike for me is the, the fact that those springs are a little bit soft but other than that you know I think it's a perfectly practical bike you know this one has 21 nearly 22,000 miles on it um, Ducatis, modern Ducatis are pretty reliable, you know what I mean? They still have their problems, um, but definitely I would not be put off buying a modern Ducati because of the old 
uh, unreliability concerns attached to them you know they're owned by audi or someone now i think and you know they really have come in they've left the caddy do what the caddy do really well which is make them beautiful make them handle nice make them sound good make them go good and they've kind of just taken all the stuff that the caddy were really bad at and fixed it for the caddy so I, I think definitely that's a huge huge pro there as well so from a practicality perspective obviously you want your bike to work and i think this is one that will definitely work um the other thing then before we go inside the toddy is this has a 20 liter tank the fuel light comes on at like 43 miles left which is a bit i don't know it's a bit much but there's plenty of range in this thing as well if you're worried about that But that's it. Um, so to summarize, what do I think of this bike? I really like it. I really like it. It's very comfortable. It has plenty of power and torque for the road. It's actually a lovely amount of power and torque in the road. You can get into it. You know, you can actually push on a little bit, get into it a little bit, and you're not gonna be going so fast that you're in a hell of a lot of trouble, but it is definitely not slow. I think the highlight for me, to be honest, is the handling and stuff in and out of corners on this. I absolutely, I love doing corners. I love doing twisties. And this bike in and out of corners is just a dream. It's lovely on the brakes. Those brakes are plenty powerful for anyone. So you can really, really get on the brakes, dive into the corner, and then the bike is just together. It's stable. So you can just punch out of the corners and really enjoy them. And that's a huge thing for me. Um, you know, the the aesthetics you heard me talk about them earlier i do think it's a beautiful bike still not sure about the beak but like if, if i went back to, to freeman's today and took this bike home with me i would be very very happy and i would probably actually fall in love with the beak after a while it's just i don't know is it something i really actively don't like or is it just because you don't see them very often and i'm unsure about them i'm not sure i don't know i can't answer that question for you and um, all i know is right now not a huge fan of it but overall i think the bike is absolutely stunning um, you know, you've loads of ground clearance. It's, it's just lovely. Extras, like I said, there aren't many. You do have the Ducati safety pack. You do have your traction control. You do have your ABS. Um, you do have your switchable riding modes. Um, you do have the heated grips. But other than that, not much um, to write home about. You know, you don't have cruise control. That's definitely a big one if you're comparing this to like the likes of an F850 GS um, or even the F900XR. You know, that has cruise control and it has the auto blipper and stuff like that. And they would be in a very similar price range. If you were to say to me, what would I buy new, this or that F900XR? I might go for the XR just because I do think it's a very beautiful bike as well. And I've ridden quite a few BMWs in recent times and I've liked all of them. So... That'd be a toss up for me. Um, but to be honest, if you're going for like a sporty kind of adventure thing, road adventure, I'm not sure what you'd actually call this. You can't go too far wrong with that. You know, they're not crazy money brand new. Um, like I said, you would have heard from Toddy earlier about how much this one is. I mean, I think it's actually very reasonable for what is, to me, a new bike. 2017 is new, it only has 20,000 odd miles on it. Um, it's running perfectly, it's in very good condition. Like I said, only that little scuff on the frame, easily fixed with a sticker. Practicality, you can do anything with this. You can put bags on it, you can put a tail pack on it, you can you can tour as far as you want to one of these things. You know, it's it's a bike made to go. But yeah, like I said, you know, overall I think this is genuinely a fantastic machine. Um, there's really not much that I can point out with it that I don't like. Uh, other than the likes, like I said, of that clutch cover on my ankle. The screen not being great, but honestly, I think most stock screens on bikes are kind of like, it's it's almost like they say, right, we'll do 90% of what we need to, and we won't finish it off. It's a, it's a weird, weird thing. You know, I know um, the CB500X is very similar. The F850 GS was exactly the same. Very, very loud. Too loud, in fact. But yeah, basically, overall, I, I mean, it, would I buy this bike? Um, it's going to slow down so you can hear me. I'm actually not going very fast, it's just windy up here, obviously we're up high. Um, would I buy this bike? Uh, yes, to be honest I would. I, you know, obviously I've been, like I said, playing with the idea of selling the CBF for a long time anyway. And I think if I was staying in Ireland, something like this, if it was for sale down in Freeman's, is, is the bike I would go for. You know, it's the bike that I would decide is, is, is right for me. Something like this, an upright, middleweight, adventure-y, tourer -y thing. Because, you know, I think that, you know, 
for a daily rider, something like this is more comfortable than the CBF. You're just that a little bit higher up. You have that little more leg room. You have that little more space for your hips. And it can still do everything. But that's my daily rider bike has to be able to do everything. And I don't particularly care if it's the fastest thing on the road because that's not why you get a daily rider, or else you just end up going to jail. So, you know, for this bike, I'm in fourth gear, doing 80 kilometers an hour at 4,000 revs, and it is just pootling along. Um, really, really, really impressed with this bike overall. Anyway, if you've watched, thank you very much for watching. As always, a massive look at that view. Massive thank you to Freeman's Motorcycles for letting me take out this thing and experience it. I, I am honestly really taken with this bike and I massively appreciate getting the opportunity to ride it. So thank you very much to them. Also a massive thank you to all of my patrons. I, I massively appreciate the support you give the channel. Uh, and I know some of you really enjoy these first ride videos, so I hope you enjoyed this one. Anyway, until next time, thank you all again for watching. Adios. Outro crew. Out of interest, what is the favorite bike I have first ridden reviewed on the channel? Um, I have to say this is probably one of my favorites. You know, this or the Africa Twin, for me, from a daily rider perspective, I think is um, is what I would like. You know, I'd love to see this fully done up with like panniers on it. I probably wouldn't put a top box on it. I'd probably put like a big bag strapped across the back. And I think that'd be enough. Anyway, let me know. I'll give you one more little. <laughs> oh man, this thing moves. <laughs> It's by no means that fast, but it feels fast. Anyway, bye outro crew.